So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple contact us type of form using our existing template with the 960 grid system. First thing we're going to do is our insert bar. We're going to select the forms tab. Then we're going to select to insert a new form. If you'll notice we have a red dash border. This is just a visual aid. We won't actually see it if I switch to live view real quick. You can see it. You don't see the special form there. Anything that we're going to want to send to the form processor, we're going to need to make sure it's inside that form. One common mistake that people do when they're starting off is that they will have multiple forms on a page, maybe one form for each form element. That won't work for us. We have to have the one form on the one uh, with all the elements combined. In the form properties, we have several different pieces that we want to look at. So in the property panel with the, with the form tag selected, you can see we have an action here. This is where the information for a form is going to go. So for example, if we are going to uh, send it to an email.php file, we need to put in here email.php. If we have another specified file, we can put it there. If the action is left blank, then the form will actually send the information to the same page you're currently on. The target is rarely used, but if you want to submit to a new window, you could choose, for example, the blank window. Uh, if you had a frames-based site, you might need to select it uh, to the parent or the top frame. That's pretty rare, though. The next method that we do use quite often is actually the method attribute. And our two options are post or get. The get method is used very commonly. You'll find in like search engines have the URL for your web page and then it puts a question mark and then it has all the form field and the appropriate information in what they call a name value pair. This is good because you can bookmark it. However, it's bad because you see all the information right there in the address field of your browser and that's going to cause a problem if you have anything that's sensitive such as like usernames, passwords, social security numbers, bank account numbers, etc. So we don't always want that as you can see. On the other hand, we also have a limit with how long the URL string can be. You're limited to about 4,000 characters. So while it's fine for your normal website and linking into a page in most forms, if you have a long form, it could cause problems. The solution to that is the post method. The post method sends the form information in what they refer to as the HTTP headers. That's when you go to send information up to a website. It sends some information that you don't necessarily see. Your form post information can go in there, as can a lot of other information. There's no size limit to this. So you can actually upload even files if you want to. If you've ever gone on like Facebook or any place like that and upload an image, this is how it's being done. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an unword list inside of our form. If I'm in Dreamweaver, I'll need to go ahead and hit the Enter key. Now move up, go down my property panel, select Unordered List, and now I can start entering my items. The first thing I would want inside of a Contact Us type of form is going to be a text field. Now a text field is a single input uh, line field I can use. In this case, I'm going to select to get the person's name. So for ID, I'll just call it Name. Label all say your name. Personally, I prefer to always attach using a for attribute, position the label before the item. Say OK. And then click after my text field was actually just an input tag that has a type of text, making sure that nothing's selected. Hit the enter key again. This is going to give me a new list item. I'm going to create a new text field. This is going to be a collected person's email address so we have a way to get back in contact with them. Then I'm going to ask what type of department are they going to want to select. Now one option for picking this would be something like a drop-down list. So Dreamer provides what they call a list slash menu item. This is actually a select tag. The initial setup is very similar to the input tag for my text field. And I'm going to call this one department. Now, right now, I didn't give it any options. So what I need to do is I need to click on my list slash menu. 
which all this is is a select tag that has a size of one. And I want to give it some value. So I'll come over here and say list values. And I might have something like, for example, the sales department. I might have shipping. I have labels and I have values. The label is what is seen by the person. The value is what gets sent to my form. I might have uh, just a general question. Now I might say, hey, I don't like these orders. So I can go ahead and click on general selection, for example, and use the up arrow and rearrange my orders. Say OK. Now I have my options here. If I look down in my property panel, I can even choose to set a different default if I want to, just by using the section called initially selected. If I have multiple items, this is a really good thing. If I got like a list of five or six of them, uh, a drop down list is a great choice to use. However, if I only have like one or two, I may want to pick a different option, such as a radio button. Now I can use a radio button group. We're going to just see if this is an urgent need. Let's say it's very urgent. I use layout using my, my BR tags and say OK. And you might say, well, how do I know what this is supposed to reference? And so I'm just going to, before that, I'm going to just put my mouse cursor there. I'm going to give myself just a div at the insertion point, nothing special. And inside of it, I'm going to say, how urgent is your request? Now you might say, well, why would I want to use radio buttons? Radio buttons can only have one option selected, for example. Uh, well, they work good if you just have two, maybe three options. You can see everything real quickly you don't have to go sorting and searching through a list. So my drop down list is if I need to select one item, I will list quite a few. My radio button is one option, I have only two or three options. I can even set a default value by clicking on radio button and saying, is my initial state checked or unchecked? If I say it's checked, I'll notice I have it checked there. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my forms tab and I'm going to enter in what we call a text area. So my text area is going to be a larger text area. I'm going to do something so I can collect the comments and questions. I'm going to say OK. You notice I have a larger area. Now I can specify how many characters what I want this to appear. I can specify how many rows or how many number of lines I want to allow myself. Now if I happen to accidentally select the wrong type of text, I meant to do a text field and I select a text area vice versa, down my property panel you can notice I have a single line, a multi-line, I can flip flop back and forth to change the type of text field that I'm going to allow people to enter things into. One more inner line, and this is going to be for my submit button. I'm not going to use a label for my submit button. Uh, just because it's a button, it doesn't need a lot of extra information and detail. One thing I do want to do, however, is that you notice here it says submit. That may not be the most obvious thing to people. So I'm going to click on my submit button, and where it says value, I can change my value, I can put in whatever I want. So I'm always going to pick something that's a little bit more meaningful to the person that they can understand what's going to happen when they click on that button.